In 1990, psychologist Anders Ericsson posited that we could master nearly any complex skill through a process of deliberate practice. This concept has grown popular in sports, in the arts, in music, in learning languages, in the corporate world, in schools, and in parenting circles. However, there's a different approach that we rarely hear about. It's called deliberate play. Deliberate practice often focuses on extrinsic motivation with a focus on specific measurable goals. It's based on hard work and dedication. But deliberate play focuses on intrinsic motivation where the process is meant to be enjoyable. It often embeds key skills into games or challenges. This leads to positive emotions which helps the learning stick. Deliberate practice tends to emphasize a singular approach to a skill and might even have rigid rules and tight criteria stating exactly how to do a task. However, deliberate play emphasizes flexibility. Here you are encouraged to find your own path using multiple methods to develop a skill. This allows for more creative risk taking, mistakes, and experimentation. Deliberate practice focuses on isolating technical skills through drills and repetition. The key is precision. By contrast, deliberate play uses a more holistic approach by connecting the skills to one another, though it should be noted that deliberate play can still be highly structured and even linear at times. With deliberate practice, the learner receives immediate correction while deliberate play might allow for delayed correction often in reflecting at the end of an activity. Note that both approaches are necessary for deeper learning. The key is to be intentional. By combining both deliberate practice and deliberate play, we can take our learning to the next level.